Well, hello everybody and welcome. This is Public Eye and my name is Fumi Inyonda. Well, our topic for conversation today is around and about elections. It's that season again when Nigerians get to elect who goes into political offices across the nation. Now, the saying is that Nigerians, every four years or thereabouts, elect the enemy of their enemy. What I mean by that is we as Nigerians seem to be very good at knowing who we do not want in power. However, how well do we know who we want to be in power so that if we see this person, he, or shall I say she, we will be able to identify them. Because what it seems is like every four years or thereabout, there's a cycle of celebration and denigration. We love him and we hate him. In four years, we now hate this person totally and we celebrate when that person leaves and welcome the new person with a lot of joy and alacrity. And in four or five or six or eight years, depending on what time it is, we then begin to hate the person again. It's a cycle of yepa and thank God. When is this going to change? What factors might actually lead to change in the decisions of who ends up in power in Nigeria? Will Nigeria perhaps one day even dare to have a female president and what might make that happen? That's our conversation today. It's a tall order. I'm a tall girl. It's a tall space. Let's take a break. When we come back from the break, we will start in earnest. Anyone above 18 years who is a registered voter is allowed to vote on election day. Data from previous elections suggest that actual voters are primarily from more impoverished regions or parts of the informal sector compared to the educated middle and higher class. I registered in my area where they came there. Almost all the members of my family were registered. And when they are sharing the PVC, our name was not there. I will give up on voting because the votings are just like wasting of time. Your blood tickled by butter. They will give you that little peanut of change and food. You have to buy your vote. If you continue like that, me and you will not like to vote for the person again. So, if you don't count me as somebody that should have PVC because you want to win, why should I bother myself? I'm a Nigerian and I can live without PVC. That is that. For that, my voters can be collected. I'll just vote for the phone, like, I'll just vote, so that you know I, as in, I vote. My advice to every Nigerian is, let's go out and vote. Maybe this can explain why it seems we can't collectively agree on those we want as leaders. One moment, we love them, but four years down the line, we can't stand the sides of them. It could also be that our choices for electoral offices are rooted in our poor self-image as a people rather than in national ideals and progressive ideologies. Right. It's public eye and our conversation today is about election. At the end of this show today, what I'm hoping that we'll achieve is to be able to identify what kind of factors need to change if we want to get different results in terms of the kind of people that ends up in political office. Now for a democracy, it is said that it is the rule of the people and so the people should matter most. Therefore, we will start with people who are not just Nigerians, but Nigerian voters. My conversation will start with the lady right in front of me. Let me yeah. do the introduction from there. And that's Hawa Alhabura. Yes. Did I pronounce that correctly? Well, it's correct enough. Alabura. Alabura. I <laughs> yeah. want to get it right. Alabura. <laughs> yeah, that's my. Alabura. It's yeah. beautiful. Thank Alabura. You. What does Alabura mean? It means Lord of Rod. Ah. <laughs> yes. How Alabura. wonderful. Yes. So you are from Borno State. Yes. 
and you founded a movement called Pull Up Nigeria. Yeah. I know you do other things, yeah. from oil to film, but we'll put that aside, because for the purpose of this conversation, mm -hmm. it's Pull Up Nigeria yes. and voting and voters, especially when it comes to young voters, yeah. young votes. Mm -hmm. We'll come back, whether Nigeria's young votes really matters or not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sat <laughs> beside you there is Mr. Doctor, actually, Dr. Jide Johnson. Dr. Johnson is a public policy and public affairs analyst. He's been doing this for longer than even myself. Not at all. I was. I used to watch you on TV. No, no, I don't no. want to hear. No, 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 no. no, no. Watch me on we look off. We look up. Okay. I no? did. I look up to you. Yeah. I, I, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I used to watch you all too. Uh, uh. So we're uh, also, of course, here. You're the director. You are the director of special programs at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, the premier institution for turning out all the troublemakers who pursue the politicians in Nigeria. Indeed, are we pursuing them? <laughs> well, <laughs> now you will tell me this too. But let's start with both of you as voters. Yeah. Are you going to vote? Definitely, I've participated. I started participating in the electoral process since 1987. When yeah. Babangida started his transition program to democratic process, I am a voter. I have contested election. I've won election. I've lost election and I've been part and parcel of the political process until I disengaged actively from partisan politics in 2007. But from 2007 till date, I've always participated by voting in the election. There's a lot of talk about the youth mm -hmm. vote. Yeah. And it's, I'm happy you are here. Is there such a thing as a youth vote in Nigeria? Because it's clear, it seems, from at least the statistics and data we have, mm -hmm. that Nigeria seems to have the poor vote. Yeah, very What Nigeria poor. has is the poor vote. Yeah, absolutely. Does Nigeria have a youth vote? No, we don't, I, I would say, because um, I am a first-time voter, and I just couldn't sleep anymore because of the things that happened in Nigeria. And then I realized, because um, with this movement, when I founded it, we, we're in stages. But right now, what we're trying to do is get people within the age of 18 to 35 to register to actually vote. Because we noticed that most people in that age bracket don't even have a voter's card. And the people that have voter's card in that age bracket are people that, you know, they, their votes can be bought. So <laughs> definitely, I would say that I don't think we have a strong enough youth voter um, um, team or system yet for... Okay, for I can us. come back yeah. to you because, you know, something, you identify something quite clearly there. Yeah. It's not like, it's not as though we don't have a youth vote. Yes. We have a poorer young people vote. vote. Absolutely. You know, so we, the majority of voting in Nigeria is done by communities yes. where, you know, just poorer communities. Yeah. And if you take into cognizance... Mm -hmm that the level of poverty in Nigeria mm -hmm. is quite high. Yes. You are talking a significant number, number of people. So yeah. now that you are talking, you are specifically talking about urban, bear in mind that it's also urban poor. Yeah. But you are talking specifically about middle class young yes. people. I'm talking about people that are living even just slightly above minimum wage. I'm yes. talking about people that are earning salaries that start from forty to 50,000 naira. Even at that level, we don't have enough voters at that particular level. So we really have the people living below the minimum wage or just on the minimum wage that actually participate. Dr. Johnson, if I do yeah. fast, quick calculations and mathematics, which I'm not very good at, yeah. if you got, if you started becoming, you know, voting actively from 1987, as myself, I also, I think my mind was a little later, you know, you were already voting even though you were young. What do you think the problems, and you were clearly a middle class by any standard, young person at the time you started voting correct me if i'm wrong so what has changed why has the middle class young of nigeria become less engaged than you'd have expected uh, what has changed is the level of voters awareness and the attempt by government to encourage younger people to participate in the political process. So, if we say, for example, for every level of government, mm -hmm. let's take the presidency, because everybody likes to focus on presidency, <laughs> it's 15 million votes. Yeah. And the particular sections of the society, let's start with the youth, decided that we are going to get behind a particular candidate. Yes, and any. we are delivering 17 million, million votes. votes. 
you know the magic. Is it possible? <laughs> you know the magic 12 million vote. It was a magic 12 million vote in the bag that secured Buhari the presidency. Yeah. Hmm. It was a magic 12 million vote that secured him the presidency right. against all odds in 20 in 2015, and that made people to go and bring him out after the man wept and said he's not contesting the election again. Now, Atiku is going about talking about his magic 11 million votes. Now, it's a game of numbers. Democracy is a game of numbers. Polarity is a game of numbers. 15 million people voted for the president. Take a head count of all the university students mm -hmm. that are on strike, as he's on strike. Just imagine if all university students in Nigeria Student university should come out and say, we are bringing out the president, we are bringing out the Senate president, we are bringing out the 109 senators, the 360 House of Rep members, the governors. They will win the election convincingly. Absolutely. Okay, how, 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 you know, can I see you, I see you, I see you nodding and I see you. Yes. Which I, part of it, I, I want to go back to that issue of the alienation in the first instance, because that, uh, that example you've given shows if you actually harness that mm -hmm. group, what's possible. Yeah. Why is Dr. Rice at those the reasons? I mean, I don't even imagine that you know what yeah, Mamsa and yeah, all of yeah, that is. No, he's, he's, he's a bit right. Uh, you know, he's right, but in his own... Um, but I look at it from a different point of view because I'm not part of the government. I do not intend to be part of the government. But what I'm saying is you have mentioned people like the Femi, Fa, um, the Falanas, the Jerry Ganas, and those are humans, they're Nigerians that grew themselves to that level to start fighting for a good cause, right? So I'm trying to say what we need is that you know, awareness as individuals, as young people to see that this country is actually our country because the people at the top or the government people or the people that have been there have weaponized what I call poverty. They understand what it means. They understand investing in government and collecting their investment. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of there are a lot of things going on in there that I believe that young people need to understand and now believe that it is our fight. So we need to all gather and fight that fight. So that's why when you are saying something about um, national orientation and all that, these things are headed by people that are in government. So I do not want to be part of something. I want to be part of a new thing. You know, I want the actual leaders of tomorrow to begin to participate in leading the country. For that Nigeria's youth bulge, mm -hmm. And Nigeria has a youth bulge. Mm -hmm. What is stopping them from voting? Or are they voting and their voting are dispersed? You know, so that's what I want to identify. When what the, national, to, when the yeah. president of National Association of Nigerian Students is a component part of the presidency, the official card that is given to him is the presidency. Mm -hmm. When you don't have a system that allows students to elect their own representative, when you have a, a, a system that does not call for this. The beauty of democracy is that majority we have their way. Mm. Minority we have their say. Any culture that does not allow for dissenting view is not ready for growth. Yeah. Even God said, come, let us reason together. But we live in a society that we want everybody to have a monolithic thinking. Mm -hmm. For us to think the same way and for us to think the same way or to act the same way and expect to get a different result Someone said, is the beginning of insight. So there is, the, there is the need for a change. And what is that change? The youth must understand, and that's what this program is all about, mm -hmm. bringing it to their understanding that you must participate in the process. You must get yourself engaged. Yeah. You must join a political party. I was, while I was in Unilag, I was a secretary of a ward in one of the major two major political parties that contested the election in 1992. I was a ward secretary. I was a delegate to an election. I participated in the process. You can't talk about political issues in my, in my local government, for, ex, for example, without mention, if you mention my name to the political leaders, they are aware of it. So we need that consciousness to be raised. But do they want the youth to participate in the process? Because what we see is 15 million. Yeah. Our fate has been decided by, by 15, just 15, 15 million. million I described, I define democracy, the type of democracy, as the government of the minority, perpetuated by the stupidity, who refuse to go out to vote, on the election, day, either by reading newspaper or playing football on the street. And if you have not participated in the process, you have lost your right of complaint. Absolutely. And as far as the present political class are concerned, they are not interested in voters' education. So they are not absolutely. interested in youth empowerment because they can sustain that 15, 60 million, million and they keep with, going billions of, with billions of, of naira, naira and, and then they continue. It's an investment. Yeah. This is an so investment. let yeah. me pedal back a bit and say, yeah. to even start with getting them involved to vote 
in the first instance? I what, what needs to shift? I, I, I think so many Nigerians, especially young Nigerians, are heavily distracted. There is this heavy distraction that comes from social media, that comes from a level of comfort that they have, and they do not fight for the real causes, right? And they've just become lazy. So what I, be, what I think um, is that we need to just start motivating, sensitizing, educating one another that, look, Nigeria is all we've got, and we've got to put all we've got into all that there is, right? And we begin to tell each other that we have a say, because every time I talk to people, when I tell them about registration, Registration or participation in governance, they say, who are the people that we are, in, we are supposed to vote for, for example? They say, look at the people coming out for presidency, look at the people coming out for governors. Like, these are people that have been in power for over 20 years, right? So why do I need to vote for them? But what they do not know is that if in Lagos State, a governor is decided by maybe 2 million people, right? It means that 2 million or 4 million of us can decide whoever we want to be there. And we need to see it work. Work. That's why I say it's a long-term goal for someone like me, right? In 2023, it doesn't matter if 20 million of us as young people can gather and say we want to vote for a cow, for example, right? We do know that that cow is going to get 20 million votes. We do not know whether one of the aspirants here right now might get 22 million votes. But what it will show us is that our 20 million votes is matching up to the 22 million votes of whoever is it, um, the person that is likely to win the next election. And it will just increase the momentum and people will understand that the power and decision is in our hands and these votes actually matter. Dr. So, Jones, yeah. that's, sounding, that's sounding exciting yeah. that, because that sounds to me like strategy and yeah. I love strategy. Yeah. <laughs> so if we say, for example, for every level of government, mm -hmm. let's take the presidency because everybody likes to focus on presidency, <laughs> it's 15 million votes yeah. and the particular sections of the society, let's start with the youth, decided that we are going to get behind a particular candidate yes, and any. we are delivering 17 million, million votes. votes. You know the magic, Is it possible? <laughs> you know the magic 12 million votes? Because, <laughs> however, the consciousness must, must be raised. I mean, what I like about what we are doing is we are identifying clear... Once I see a gap, I see that's something to plug. Mm -hmm. Clearly, from what you have said now, is one way or the other we have to get the youth together on agreeing certain, certain flashpoints. Exactly. My question would be, knowing everything we know, we know already that everything that should have helped that process has been decimated one way or the other. Projecting into the future, I want to know, because that's what we try and do on this show, we, not, we want to find the gaps, so that I don't know who is watching, they can have possible ideas of what needs to be done. Let's start with the youth, because the youth, I think, are the easiest in I that regard. I think that starts with what our and mm -hmm. the various groups are doing, what they are doing, commendable there. You've seen that a lot of consciousness and a lot of NGOs talking about voters' education, yeah. voters' awareness, and the rest of it. And you see a lot of younger people being interested in the, in the, political, in the, political, in the political process. There is also a responsibility on the part of the community which I belong to. The media is the ears and eyes of the people. The media is the conscience of the side. The media is the melting pot. We cannot become embedded and part and parcel of the political process. The media should not be the friend of the government. The media is an adversary. Mm -hmm. It's an adversary because government, in actual sense, operates in secrecy. The media operate in throwing such light into issue. So someone that wants to operate in secret and someone that wants to do you always be enemy. But in a situation whereby you are embedded within the process, then you are not working in the interest of the people. So I think if we begin to work in this direction, I can assure you that um, we will we'll raise the bar and the level of youth participation might move from 10% to 20%, 20% to 30%, and then the youths can I, become a major factor. In the I population. also think, you know, poverty has been weaponized so badly because, um, for example, with Pull Up Nigeria, we have partnered with INEC and we're doing events across geopolitical zones. And we're starting in Lagos. And I, I just realized that there are a specific, I realized there are specific groups that we need to target. So I said, let's target the people that are caterers, the people that serve in events, you know, models and stuff like that to come for this because INEC will be present to enroll biometrics and we will help you register 
together and we'll sort of get the numbers up like we've been doing. And a group said to me, say, oh, for us to come and register for our PVC, we need for 4,000 Naira to come. And I said, I just don't understand this. First of all, we are not a political party. We are not contesting for office. Neither are the volunteers that are working with me contesting for office. We are trying to raise, you know, voters, uh, education and all that up. And they said, no, sorry, we cannot come. And then I now said, what is really going on? Why has this thing, because are you telling me that with 4,000 Naira, say for example, that I am contesting for office and I just put 4,000 4, Naira times a specific number of people that I know will Will guarantee me that seat. You people will make me become that person, or you people will make me become a member of the House of Rep or Senate or Governor because I gave 4,000 Naira. So these are things that we need to find ways to say, how do we begin to take that? Because it's it's a mindset game. It's right. a mindset game. I mean, I've completely run out of time of this, yeah. this segment, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because this is an ongoing conversation, I've taken a lot of notes of what both of you have said. Yeah. Um, I think it was 2009 when I was traveling around Nigeria interviewing people. I was in a village in Ondo and I met a remarkable young man, Ebenezer his name. I've not forgotten. He was so mercurial and magnetic, you know, and um, he managed to arrange a lot of things for us in that village, in our community. And then he started doing what Nigerians do a lot. He started talking about, you know, the leaders are this, they didn't do this, they didn't do that. And I asked Ebenezer, I said, why are you, who is the counselor here? He said, ah, one, Bobo, one guy. I said, why are you not the counselor? He said, it's not our type they are looking for. I said, what type are they looking for? He said, eh, I don't know book. I said, what is the required com uh, um, um, qualification? Qualification. He said, Nepa, Nepa, Nepa certificate. He said, hey, I said, Nepa B. I said, I said, but do you have that? He said, yes. Yeah. I said, so why have you not um, contested? There's a sense. You know, that happened when we went to Port Harcourt. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened. I was actually asking people on the community, because you've said something that I thought, mm -hmm. we have to take some things and run with it. Yeah. That if you attack, if you look at this from the community level, right, from councillors to, you know, even things like landlords associations yeah. in the areas. It's, it's important. If more and more young people, because in your own area, no one, they know you. It go hard for anybody to come tell you say we could bring any kind. They are of looking for secretaries. Your, your own area, it's your own area. Mm -hmm. Your street starts with your street. Yeah. Now you be dispersing for that street. Finish. You know the automatic position for youth. Yeah. In all of this, as is secretary. Yeah. They are looking for a younger person to write. Right. Yes. To write minutes for them, yeah. and that's the process of influence. Go so to these meetings. That's that's. I wanted to point that out. I also wanted to point out that. You know, Dr. Johnson also said something recently. There's been some, there are things that are changing in the favor of the people. Yeah. But the media, I agree with you, and other factors have to make sure that they're actually showing the people that something has shifted. Yeah. Because if we want to sit down and talk about the problems, since me, I was 12, we have been doing <laughs> yeah. so. We need and I don't know about other people. Yeah. I feel disempowered and mm -hmm. I'm tired of feeling disempowered. That, and all I want to hear yeah. is how we are going to get these things done. Most especially with educated young people. Mm -hmm. And Nigerians are well educated to some extent. Education maybe is not as great, but they, they, the areas of there must be infiltration yeah. Yeah. of the young. Mm -hmm. Dr. Johnson, do you want to leave? Uh, uh, yeah, my, my closing remark is you give us an open invitation that you come to our school. And I'm telling people like you <laughs> and people like her, mm. go to the campuses, talk to the students. All right. And we'll take it up from there. Okay. We're going to take a break. I'm going to send a challenge out. This is yeah. my own challenge for Nigerians generally. It was an older man that said this to me one day. I think it was actually with regard to America and all the issues with Donald Trump. And I met him at a train station and he said, in my time, he was actually running one of the biggest media platforms in the world. I met him at the train, so he had retired. He said when he was the manager, he used to say to everybody, to change the way people, uh, uh, perspective, yeah. he would say, everything you complain about, after you have finished complaining about it, what do you do? find me a solution. <laughs> yeah. And when you find me a solution, I put you in charge of it. Mm -hmm. So he said the first thing he complained about was the toilet, and they gave him the toilet to clean. And as long as it was there, the toilet was never dirty again. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. <laughs> I, I think the challenge. I'm ready. I I'm ready to go. So all to of us. Solution-based. Yes. All right. Thank
Thank you. Thank, thank you both you. very much. It's a pleasure to be yes. with you. We're going to take a short break. When we come back from the break, we'll go on to the issue of does the votes actually matter anyway? So even if you got the numbers, will it matter? And what can we do to make it matter after the break? <laughs> Right, welcome back. It's election season, so our conversation is about getting good leaders into political offices. And the next set of conversation, I brought some big guns. I'm going to start with the one right in front of me. J uh, Japheth Joshua Omojua, everybody calls him JJ, is the founder of Alpha Rich. He's, of course, a renowned speaker, often is leading conversations in the media, in Nigeria, and across the world across around issues of development, politics, and so on and so forth. Uh, he's a guest lecturer at the Free University in Berlin, and he has studied behavioral change at the University College in London. Thank you, JJ, for coming. Thank you. Good to see you. I'm, ha I'm happy to be here. It's been, been a, a while. while. Been a while. Been Good to see you. Beside you is Professor Surajuddin Mudashir. He's a political scientist. He is a professor at the Lagos State University. He was head, I think he was, is it acting or acting head? head? Acting head at the Department of Political Science at LASU. He is also a member of Africa Association of Political Science. He is also part of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs and Nigerian Political Science Association. That's why I said I brought the big political <laughs> guns. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, I'm going to start this way. There's a cycle. Now it makes me laugh when I think about it. When I was six or five, I remember Nigerians celebrating when, I think it was Gowan, came in. I remember them cursing when it was time for him to leave. After that, there was Shagari. After Shagari, there was... After Shagari was the coup, they celebrated the coup. I think it was um, um, Buhari. It was general at that time. Yes. The general went, general came. Yeah. General came, general went. We went through many, many generals. And then there was the Shonekon. Shonekon, the interim the government. Inter and then, of course, Another the general. Yes. The one thing that is constant is that almost psychotic cycle of Yepa and thank God. Yepa and thank God. What is going on? Nigerians seem to know who not to vote for. Do they know who to vote for? I think there is this issue we need to understand that Nigerians, has, they, we have never given opportunity to a willing president. We have always been given opportunity to somebody to our anointed president. I think that is one major issue we need to look into. There are people who have come out to show their willingness to govern us, but we have never allowed them. Rather, we have given opportunity to people who, one way or the other, will be anointed by somebody somewhere to say, okay, this is the person we are going to bring up as our president, and that's where we should direct our votes. So that has always been a problem for us. And we have continued in that manner up to this present moment. Right. You, know, you understand my point? So it's either a particular military that is leaving, is coming up with somebody, an anointed candidate that he wants us to vote for, or a particular civilian that is working up, uh, uh, conducting transition, is having an anointed candidate that he wants Nigeria to vote for. Right. And that is usually where we always direct our votes. JJ, is this the making of the people or the making of the system that we have always seemingly picked an anointed person or a person who doesn't come forward conf confidently and say, you know what, this is what I want to do? I mean, first of all, Buhari came out. He was, he was very, he couldn't be more willing. He ran four times. Mm. He lost three times. He was a willing president. But beyond that is that there is nothing exceptional about Nigerians. We are as human as every other humans in every country. 
negativity bias is the primary reason why you said it earlier, and it's, it's interesting that you said it again, is the primary reason why Nigerians always know who they don't want to vote for. Mm -hmm. The average human being really and truly know exactly what they don't want. The challenge comes when you start to ask them, so what do you want? You mm -hmm. will get a loud silence, and it's an indication that they've, they've not actually thought through that. And that's why, generally speaking, people do not get the life that they want, because whilst they are very obsessed, naturally because of the part of their brain, the primal part of their brain, the survival part of their brain, as to what they do not want, the part about what they, what they do want is not as automatic mm -hmm. for the brain. It takes consciousness, it takes thinking. So it's not a Nigerian thing, it's a human thing, right? And I assure you, any political party that you build that is as big as the PDP and the APC will behave like the PDP and the APC because the PDP and the APC are Nigerians in the ultimate sense. Right. And that reflection shows in elections, in churches, in mosques, in local governments, in students. You know, forget about the, the macro reality of Nigeria. Those go to the subunit of Nigeria. You see the PDP and the APC at play. But too many times, because people are not in that system, they are pointing blames. But really, when you point that blame, there's three, other, there's, there's three of your fingers directly pointing at you because ultimately, and that's why our leaders have changed over generations, but our reality and the type of leadership and the essence of leadership amongst our leaders have not changed. And that's because we are who we are ultimately, whether we're in PDP or APC or the subunit sub of Nigeria. Fascinating. So, Professor, JJ seems to have to, to, thrown us a gauntlet that this is us. Yeah. Our leaders is us. So does it mean that what we see is what we will always get? Uh, well, uh, somebody once said that uh, people deserve the kind of leaders they get. Mm. You know, so that we are Nigerians. Perhaps that's why we are getting this kind of, uh, these people as our leaders. You know, of course, we will not go and bring angels to come and govern us. People that will govern us will come from within us. So we are seeing people that are coming out. But you see, the major issue is our mentality. Our psyche has been uh, 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 repudiated over time. And for me, this is very, very important. Because we have, as a big weapon, the youth, you know, if that should be Do we have a big weapon? Because, I mean, yes. there's this thing. We're yes. always talking about youth not being in power. Yeah, there's an argument that Nigeria has always been run by, run by young people. This is what the argument says, that the founding fathers of Nigeria they were young. came into power when they, they are young. young. Yeah. They have never left. They have often replaced themselves so, yes. at lower level with young people who then rise up to become older and gain power. So, how much, how much stake to you, do you put to that? Is that really? No, no, I'm not. I'm not I don't saying, want to take you away. No, no, I'm, I'm not, not saying Nigerians. I'm not saying Nigerians have not engaged this youth. But you see, I think what, I'm, what, what we are trying to look at here is the space. Mm. The space is not opened enough for a lot of youth to participate. It is a closed system. That before you can get there, you have to strive. You have to go extra mile before you can join them. Right. You understand? So if it's an open system where anybody can go in, participate, and get there, I mean, I mean the, a lot of youth will be there. But it's a closed system that most youths are disenfranchised in a way. They've been deprived in a way. And that is what you see. When you go out there and you see the public primary school, the public secondary school, what have they become mm. today? Mm. Somebody once told me that when, if you go into public primary and secondary schools, the people you find there are housemates of people who cannot send them to private schools. They also they prefer to send, to send them to public primary and secondary schools so that they can also measure up to some level with their kids that they are taking care of. So, so if we agree, the children of this elite yeah. go to private schools. Mm -hmm. You understand? So the way those public institutions have been bastardized is what we are witnessing in tertiary institutions today. But the, the, the thing is, it seems like 
a group of people must determine what is acceptable to them or not. Otherwise, there's no basis for being together. Shouldn't, does Nigeria have, as Nigeria defined, or should Nigeria aspire to define what is acceptable and not acceptable to the Nigerian people in the Nigerian state, as long as it exists? There are documents, right? There are documents that says this is our foreign policy, this is what we want to do for this, and this is what we want to do for that. But documents are not what move a nation. It's the collective will of the people and their commitment to that. But Nigeria is in a very interesting position because ultimately, what's a Nigerian language? What's a Nigerian identity? It's a collection of nations, right? So there has to be, first of all, an intention and an agreement that we actually want it to be like that before you define anything else. It's from the point of togetherness. Then we form an identity. What are we going to be called? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we agree on that. And then we find the intersections of our interest. We define those intersections as our collective interest. And then we move forward with it. If you look at every election cycle, you would find out that more often than not, each region of Nigeria goes back to its ball. Because after push comes to shove, everybody goes back to that primal sense of survival yep. in the limited reality of resources and all of those things. Isn't that Nigerians because there? we are well defined as individuals, but we are not defined as a, collect as as a, matter a collective? Of yeah. So it takes me back to where this conversation started from. That whether it is 2023 or 2030 or wherever, in terms of being identified, and you, 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 you zeroed in on it, where it's human and definitely it's played out in Nigeria over and over again. We are very good at identifying what we don't want. Less good at identifying what we want. For that to change, there has to be a conscious, you have to actually train your consciousness to do that, which is where behavioral change not comes in. It's not automatic. No. So because part of the purpose of this show is to talk about things that are not necessarily now, but you know, you refer to it in 20 years and say, okay, yeah, they were going in a, in a particular direction, is to say, for us, therefore, wouldn't it be a wise idea to suggest that in the short and perhaps medium term, when we are looking at people who want to go into positions of authority in Nigeria or power, it is less important to, that, to look at people who say, I'm going to build your bridges, I'm going to do that, and more important to look at people who say, and perhaps might eventually tackle that big elephant in the room of agreeing, you know, how we should actually live together as different nation states within one nation. Is that a wise idea? Unfortunately, and is it practical? Unfortunately, we, we, we have to do everything at the same time. Because if yeah. you're trying to do that and people can't have water or they can't travel and they can't have power, they're going to be asking, are you mad? Yes. Like, I want to leave. Nigeria, we have to understand, Nigeria is in a storming, it's a forming nation. And it has a storming stage of that formation. And when you think of an individual that is 60 or 70 years old, you're thinking of somebody that is getting close to the border, mm -hmm. right? But in the context of a country, in the context of countries, 100 years is very small. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost nothing. When you start to read history mm -hmm. and you see the things that happened inside millennium, inside thousands of years, inside 2,000 years, when you start to read about the Chinese dynasties and the different eras, you start to see the the almost insignificant nature of a year, mm -hmm. let alone, uh, or, or 50 years, mm -hmm. let alone 20 years and 25 years. So Nigeria is a nation that is forming. It will storm. Whether fortunately or unfortunately, those of us that are alive now are the ones experiencing the turbulence of that formation. Like, um, the future and time is, like you were saying, is, is like a computer program. What you input is what you get out of it. Mm -hmm. I hope and I believe that ultimately, in the next 100 years, if there were a country called Nigeria, but most likely there would be a place, might not be called Nigeria, but there are people living in those areas, that ultimately those people will define whether they want to live together. If they don't define whether they want to live together, they will define the terms of not living together. And the individual nations that come out of it will define their collective desires 
and objectives. And if it so happens that they actually agree to go together, they will do all of that. But it's a forming process, and a forming process that is at a storming stage. Hopefully one day it will numb, but the things that will make it numb, unfortunately, are also in scarce supply. Prof, I wanted to come to you on that note, that at the end of the, game, at the day, you know, chaos, which is what you are describing, is normal. And I think that what most wise society do is they teach people to become comfortable with chaos because the state of being alive is an engagement with chaos. Because once things settle, it starts to die, yes. you know? So being at this kind of stage of chaos is actually exciting because it means that things are happening. In terms of things that are happening, for me, for this show, what would you suggest would influence the possibility of getting more and more conscious people into leadership? Well, I think first and foremost, we need to introduce sanity. We need to introduce sanity into what we do. So some, some things happen that you try as much as possible to understand them, but you cannot find explanation for them. Mm. Understand? So there is a need for our leaders to have sincerity of purpose. Whatever we are doing, let us know that we are doing it for the system, not for our individual person. When we begin to do things for the system and not for selfish interests, I think we we'll begin to create consciousness you know, for people. We we'll begin to open, open up the space so that more people can come in and participate. Mm. Otherwise, if we continue in this vicious cycle, you know, I mean, I, I don't see us, I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. And it's a big problem for us. He said something that probably in another 100 years, and I could see members of the you know, audience looking at him like, like, ah, what is this man saying? 100 years? <laughs> Will I still be alive by then? You know, so it's like we are not projecting any prospect for the younger ones. And for them, it's a big problem. The survivor you mentioned, they want to survive too. A good number of graduates out there cannot find any work to do. In our universities today, Lecturers can hardly have space to park their cars. Yeah. Because students come into university to park cars, and who are the students? Yahoo boys. Mm. So they must find a way to survive. And if the state, if the system cannot give them survival, they must find survivor. And that is what some of them, even those who are serious, a pocket of students who we refer to as brilliant and whatever, they see their colleagues, they see their mates, you know, riding cars, coming in flashy attires and whatever. They also want to be like that. Right. I've got to go. I know that I'm going to take a few yeah, questions and answer. Uh, but before that, what I want us to apply our mind to is that concept of time and what it means, you know, because we say, okay, in a hundred times, everybody's pa panicking. and like, oh, in a hundred years, I won't be alive. But also, the question really is, what you do today, what are we afraid of, of a hundred years time? You know, a lot of things are happening now that we are influencing, and those will influence what happens in a hundred years. I think that what I would like us to apply our mind to is what do we do when we are not acting out of panic? A wise person said to me, you know, once when I said, he said, when everything is going wrong, what does a wise person do? I said, you must fight, you must go out. I said, no, you must be still. You must be still, because oftentimes wanting to fight is your ego anyway, because mm -hmm. you think you know more and you're better than others. You must recognize your own, your own role in things and then ask, what do we really want? Not what don't we want, but what do we really want? want and how do we get there? And what is my own role in that? Right after the break. Right, I know that we went on a break on a radar. I could sense that many people didn't feel satisfied. You know, all this talk is a bit exoteric. So, you know, 
what we are going to do, I'm going to ask questions of the, let the audience ask questions of you. You know, the younger people know better. I know that there are some people who want to ask questions. Raise your hands wherever you are if you wanted to ask a question. I'll start with the people that are, are behind me. Ask your questions. Why is there a very slim chance of other political parties aside the APC and PDP winning Nigerian, elect, Nigerian presidential election? Right. Yeah. Thank you. There's another question there. Um, our maid a statement that the youths are distracted by social media and all and whereas I feel it's not distraction because social media is like a medium where we express our views on politics so what other mediums can we get involved in to express our political views on government and politics to the question that was about why don't why don't those other parties have a chance? It really has nothing, it's not a matter of opinion, it's a matter of how the world works. In an election, there are certain things that you cannot rule against. First of all, it's a conscious decision. Election, voting is a decision, it's, it's a behavior. And before people take that, take that action to go and vote, they are conscious of who they are voting for. But that consciousness is driven by unconscious processes, e.g., who looks like them? Who refers to things that they are interested in? Who did they know? If people do not know you, they will not, they, not even they will not. We will not is a, wrong, is a wrong language. They cannot vote for you. You can't choose what you don't know. You can't choose who you don't know. So how, how much of, of a presence do these parties have across Nigeria? Really and truly, because we're always, always asking, thought force, thought force. Thought force is fictional. When is it going to be a reality? Apart from the social media thing, there is what we call social socialization process. You understand? I think that is also important. Unfortunately, most parents these days are also disenchanted about the process. And you see parents warning their what their kids, their children, don't go into politics, so don't go and do it because at the end of the day, what you see are different kinds of you know, are, are, are classes, you know, and no parent will want his, his or her words to be killed or to be, you know. Uh, so there are several other, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't see social media as a distraction, really. My question is, at my age, I don't have voter's card. Okay, I've gone to my uh, local government several times for the voter's card, and they are calling a huge amount of money just for me to do voter's card. And I've lost interest already because the election and the government are not even giving us any improvement. So there is no need of the voter's card anymore. Since this country now is, if you don't have money, you will not get what you want. Prof, let me start with you this time around. Yes, uh, I want to start with uh, the last uh, speaker, you know, and uh, that is to say that uh, it's very strange hearing you know what you have just said. I don't think you should, because of that uh, surrender, just like JJ said. If you have visited your local government, your whatever, there are so many platforms to express your view, and so I'm sure somebody somewhere will come up to say, "Oh, why is that happening in that particular locality?" So it is just now that you are expressing it, that we are hearing it, that somebody somewhere has not been able to get his or her PVC just because some people somewhere are asking her to bring money. You know, so you can bring this up to become a national debate you know, and attract some attention. So you need to voice out, you need to bring it up. You know, at the, that is why you need to participate at your CDA level, at different levels that you find yourself in your neighborhood. Mm. Say it out. Let some people who will be interested, let them take it up and fight for you. All right. What about the issue of, you know, they need to let more young people in because if we get the young people, then yes. we get the change with it. Yes. My, my, my take on that is that they will not allow, they will not open the space willingly. The political class would not, it is, it's a, for me, it's a deliberate attempt to keep you out so that it can be in control at all the time. 
But you have to strive. You have to let them know that you also need to take control. It's not about, you know, because they have closed the whatever, therefore we have to stay away. They want to make you to stay away. And you don't need to give them the opportunity to push you away. These are people that very soon their generation will go. And if guys is not taking, they will do replacement, you know, by bringing in their children. But once you tell them you want to also take control, you can, by the time you bring yourself together, they, they, you become a force to reckon with. Hmm. And somebody will have to give you the space. Right. JJ. I mean, and Iran said in that book, um, it's, it's not Atlas Shrugged. I'm trying to remember the other book, where the question was, this person said they were going to do something. And the other person was like, who is going to let you? And the person said, no, it's not a question of who is going to let me. It's a question of who is going to stop me. Mm -hmm. And you would actually find out when you pay attention to some of the characters in our political system, a lot of them actually came from the disemparing positions that a lot of us feel today. Mm -hmm. And they started to join. There's no rule for starters against joining a political party. You actually can join. You actually can get in those spaces. There's a Mandela effect when it comes to certain ideas. Um, we've, we've, we've heard people say them a lot. We've started to believe them, that your vote does not count, that it's their thing that leave APC and PDP. As an individual, you must question these ideas. You must test these things. My first day at university, somebody said, carryover is guaranteed. There is even nothing you can do about it. I went into my room and I thought about it. And I was like, I'm, I don't have time to waste. And maybe that person was right. I don't know, but I never got one. And it wasn't because I was, it, I just made a decision that that was not guaranteed for me. So the fact that people have always said something does not mean that that thing is always true. Forget the, the big reality of Nigeria. Just to understand Nigeria, just look at Nigerians in small systems, mm. starting from WhatsApp groups, mm -hmm. starting from school alumni groups, starting from estate associations and groups, starting from the religious groups. You don't want to know the kind of politics that happens when it comes to the election of religious oh, leaders yeah. and things like that. It's the reality of our country. When you understand those small units, then you start to understand Nigeria better. And when you start to speak to that understanding, people start to hear excuses. No, they are not excuses. You cannot solve a problem that you do not understand. Hmm. First of all, you have to accept that this is a problem. Then you have to understand the problem. And that begins the process of change and, okay. and fixing that problem. Right. Well, I can't say it better than that. I don't think we can say it much better than that. I've completely run out of time, unfortunately, for taking questions. And you know, at the end of the day, I trust people. I think that people are smart entities, we're all entities, you know, and we will take the best decisions for ourselves. On the path of this show, what we do is throw all the conversations and all the ideas out there. I always see it as things falling from the sky. You catch the one you want. It's up to you at the end of the day. But one of the things I'd like to leave all of us, because I'm a little older and you have been watching me for a long time, is that a lot of the so-called monsters to see today, I remember them when they were also disempowered. You know, it seems like, wow, this person can do anything. I remember that when they were crying to the babas in front. You yourself will become the babas and the mamas tomorrow. It's important what you start to do today, even in smaller groups. But as regards the election, I think the consensus on this show is start at least by ensuring that you vote. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.